just me and my guitar Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back here at Mark's Aquatics. This is part two of the shrimp tank build and filter build. Now then, while you lot were snoring last night, I crept back downstairs after I glued all this up, gave it a few hours, couldn't sleep. So what I've done is I've come down and I've glued this, the pre -fil uh, the, uh, the filter box in, okay? Now if you can see here, probably see here, okay? What I've done is, the box was just there, I put blobs of silicone, dotted them along, just like this, one there, placed it in that way, slowly squeezed it in against this side and then dropped it down onto the silicone giving it a good good old depress down and a squeeze there to squeeze it up up and down to make sure it's really stuck now that's nicely stuck there now we're happy with that so we can turn it up now and we can spin it around and I can give you a better a better view of what we've got going on I've just turned it the other way around so you can see it's a little bit a little bit better on the uh, but there's our little gap there so we hopefully if all goes to plan we'll get a nice little blade of water running out of there any little overspills of silicone that you get around in the corners like that you can always trim them back with a Stanley blade afterwards and scrape it back and tidy it up a bit but that's all fixed in there now all fixed in there and looking good so now what we've got to do now I thought well we got this old filter we bought with the tank it came with it so I thought what we'll do I'll just stick you back on the tripod and we can explain this to you right the game plan is we've got this old pump and I don't think I'm going to use it for anything that I've got so um, I thought if we took this apart we might be able to make something else with it or leave it as it is it's got the nice little canister we've got a nice little power head there which we can use nice little impeller whizzing around there so that's gonna that could lift our water up from the base up the pipe work and through into a spray bar that we're gonna fit across here so when this is all full of media then the spray bar then will spray the water out all over the media and then that water will then come through the tank that way and we should get a nice little effect there and uh, some amazing filtration but we've got this little canister here so I'm not really sure what to do with that yet if I spin this around again I could always go onto the side in there And then I could actually take this part off here, I think that's what we'll do. Or I might actually cut this down and make this smaller actually. I'll have a think about that one. Right, what I'm going to do is going to be operation filter now, so uh, we can shift the tank out of the way. Put that somewhere safe. Right, we're going to pull this filter apart now, into its component parts. I thought about just doing an air lift system on there, but I think it's not going to be powerful enough for, um, for the amount of water that I need to get up there. So, uh, right, we've got this thing broken down now into its parts. Ideally, we just want to use the pump. But, considering we've got all this stuff as well, what I might try and do is shorten this canister up to make this a bit smaller, because I thought it looked a little bit too big in the tank. And because it's the same diameter all the way up, I thought we might be able to uh, just nip it off across there somewhere. And then we could maybe glue it back together. We're going to have to use this part here. But we don't actually have to use that. That's just the cap that goes on the bottom with the grill. But I mean we can, as long as we've got some fine sponge at the base, like that, no shrimp can get pulled up into there. 
and the water can just carry on going up there so we don't really need that bit but I think what we'll do when that's connected back into there all nicely fixed in right I'm going to cut that in half now now I'm going to use a circular saw to do this if you haven't got one of those you could use a very fine saw like a coping saw or um, or a very small tenon saw something with very small and fine teeth you'll need to cut through that or even a junior hacksaw would do it but I've got a nice big circular saw so I can zip my way through that pretty quickly so it'll save us time and you watching me sawing away for an hour okay then I'll stop you there and I'll cut this in half okay I still have all my fingers and what we've done is we've cut that in half cut the main section now straight in half so now we can get rid of that bit the idea is with that I know I could have used it all but I think it looked a little bit too big in there and I've cut that in half as well so those two bits now can go aside now that bit now will still fit and lock into there and then that bit will go onto there so now we've still got that but we've got it and, and we've got a smaller a lot smaller filter now so we can put that cartridge back in there I'll probably make a new one because that's quite a it's quite an open uh, piece of sponge that is so I'm frightened little shrimplets and things are going to get caught in amongst that I'll <clears throat> meet and get sucked up into the fan which we don't want right so now we've got that bit the idea for doing that guys is I didn't really want to see it as much so at least this way we can hide it in amongst things with plants and um, it's going to be a little bit more out of the way okay so now we've taken the top bit off as well because that obviously before you can angle that left to right to angle where you want your flow to go but we just want now we want some piping now we just want to put this in the side maybe put it that way it doesn't have to stick to the side so we obviously we want that part close to the edge of the tank there <clears throat> so our pipe can come up and our spray bar can come across right guys I've tossed that pipe idea out the window too flexible and I thought it's going to bag and it's not going to look as good so like I said we're using what we've got so what I, I had this mad thought there what I could use I could use the other end of the tank siphon going to cut the end of that off get back to you in a sec right guys just got to clean that bit up there off of there you get the hot glue gun try and let you see and try and do these things at the same time quick splodge of that round there and I've just cut up a little square bit of plastic off and I'm just gonna squash that down onto there like that right so that's that on there right I've just taken that off guys okay so I've glued that on there like that but I don't want this to come off so what I'm going to do is stick the whole glue gun inside because obviously if we have a, a blow off if that blows off the water's going to go everywhere over night time and we don't want that so I'm just going to chuck some hot glue in there right guys we've got that full of hot glue in there so that's going to go off now we get our little bit from our little mini grinder and um, we're going to make a bit of noise and we'll just buzz this little hole through the middle. Cut round in there. It's great fun making all this stuff, isn't it? It's not everyone's cup of tea, I know.
I think the uh, the human race is losing its ability to make things it really is everyone just buys everything these days right guys we've got our hole through there now through the back we've got a piece of that pipe which we can uh, pop that in there like that and that's gone through there like so and then what we're going to do we're going to run the hot glue gun now around the inside and we're going to run the hot glue gun around the outside we're not going to need all this pipe so I'll measure how much I need and then I'll cut it off with my little junior hacksaw in fact I can't find the hacksaw so I've just got the blade so I'm just going to cut that off to length right that's him cut to length now we're just going to run the glue gun around him I've got, I, I ordered some glue sticks look they're about 80 foot long I've never seen them that size before <laughs> never seen them that size just going to stick a little weld across there any stuff any excess you can just cut off and tidy it up a bit later on and the same on the inside it's great fun this trying to show you and do it at the same time and then we're going to be guaranteed near enough that's never going to pop off of there and soak the place okay that's all glued around there now nice and secure so we'll give that some time to go off and then that's done this is all going to be hidden so you're not going to see any of this so it's going to be uh, It'll be quite uh, tidy when it's all finished. If you want to speed up the process of drying this glue, just dip it in some water and, uh, or if you've got even got a hair dryer, you can put it on a cold setting. You can blast it with some cold air and that'll uh, cure that glue off a lot quicker and you can carry on a bit faster then instead of uh, hanging about as I do because I'm impatient <laughs> right guys now that's we're going to leave that put that aside let that go off and now what we've got to do is we've got to blank off this end here so I've got an old bit of perspex which I cut for another job ages ago so we can put that on the edge like that And with our little sharpie, we can just do a quick, I'll have to just bring this closer to me here to get a steady hand. And my sharpie's dried out. So, <laughs> we're going to have to find something else. I know what we can do. There's always a way. Right, couldn't find that. So I had an old uh, watchmaker screwdriver, so what I've done is I've just buzzed it around on the saw on the uh, grinder sorry put a nice sharp edge on it and now we can put that on there applying some pressure on there and scribe around it like so and then we've got a nice little score line there and now we've just got to cut that out like I said, I got my circular saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I might be able to. I'm just going to get this tripod set up a bit better for you. Right, there's our score there. My little oval we've got to cut out. I'm just going to get my saw and I'm going to cut it across there, cut it across there, and then we're just going to spin it around on the grinder until we get that little shape 
out of there okay all right guys that's what i've done with the circular saw just chopped it across there and um, we've cut it down there just to remove that piece so we can stick that aside for future builds and now we've got that little guy there now what we've got to do is go onto this get a bit noisy Okay, that's that bit done. So now we have our nice little end piece to go on there. That'll blank that off nice now with a bit of glue. There you go. All nicely blanked off. So now what we're going to do is just run the hot glue gun around the uh, around the top and stick him on. Okay, guys, where we go? We've got the end stuck on now. We've got that piece stuck on. So now all we've got to do is drill a series of I'm going to drill a series of holes all the way along here with my little mini grinder wheel here which has been a little godsend, I'll tell you this has, since I bought it, it really has been handy. Lots of little tricks of the trade you can do with these. But now I've got to do is, tiny, I've got to find a little tiny drill bit now to go in, uh, to go in there. Right guys, just going to put some lines across there now, you probably won't see them very well. A good old trick there if you want to get an equal line down something, old carpenter's trick. You put your finger on the edge of it like that. Gauge exactly where you want to go. Hold it and just drag it like that. And you'll get a nice equal, a nice, a nice line going all down. So we've got three lines there now. So you can see them. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill a series of holes. They don't have to be, they don't have to match up. 100% we can start this up now and I'll do uh, I'm just going to drill a series of holes now along there like that okay now we don't want the holes too big because it's not a massive pump so we don't know how much water we're going to get to fill this chamber up because obviously it's not going to get out the end so it's going to fill that up and then it's going to drain through like a sh like just a rain a shower coming through there okay that's all we're replicating and just replicating a shower head so um we'll put a few holes in there but we don't want it all to just come across here and then just empty out we don't want it to all come across here to get to about there and then fall out so the idea is if, if you put the holes quite far apart and then hopefully then that's going to get enough water in it to get a bit of depth and also we've got the adjuster on the pump as well, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Let's get on with it. That's that done. Now we've got a series, a nice series of holes going all the way along. Now we've got to get the tank back up here. Clear the decks. I've got some hoovering to do later on. Right, let's grab this tank.
Chuck all my bits and bobs out of the way there. Alright, let's adjust you up here a minute. Okay, right, you got all that now. Now what we need is a short piece of this pipe to go on there. Now if you ever get stuck about putting this pipe on, if you, if you think, oh no, look, it's never going to go on there, dip that in some boiling water, okay, for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, and that will just become super soft and it will just go straight over the top of there no worries at all this is actually all right for a fit so we can screw that on nice and tight and then when we go up to the tank now we can measure how much we need to go inside Now I've got to find my scissors. Where are you scissors? There you are. Right. Now we've got that. Now we can shove that in there. shorter I think and now that fits nicely onto there and we cut it just so it rests on the back of the glass now so in theory now this should pump the water up fill this chamber up which is going to be full of media which we can put in in a minute because we're going to have to give it a couple of rinses through just to make sure everything's watertight and everything's going to be working okay and I'm going to have to rig up my hose pipe to uh, just a normal hose pipe for the time being just to make sure this is all working fine so what we'll do now is we'll get some of the uh, that's got a nice fit in there that has so right now we've got the media that we got from Richard from Pond Guru so what we're going to do is we're going to put that in in here first I'm not going to worry too much about it it's going to have a bit of dust in there to begin with but we're going to be uh, brushing this through quite a bit first tip it to me a minute a little bit of dust in there we can just get that out Look at that brilliant stuff. And then we've got the uh, the bio home ultimate here as well. We won't probably need all of that. But if we just place some around. And you've got to remember this being a shrimp tank, it's, you're going to have minimal debris in the water anyway. So if you wanted to, you could put a sponge in here as well. Or, um, or some floss. We could put some of the floss actually. 
we've got a friction as well we could cut some pads of that and put it across the top so that'll act as a pre-filter first and then it'll run through there i think we could do that we've got the stuff so why not use it eh? I'm chucking it everywhere. Okay, that's enough of that stuff in there. Put that back in the bag. Right now we're starting to look, look like we're doing something now. It's starting to come together. Right, I'm going to pause you a minute and I'm just going to go and get the hose pipe in and we'll uh, we'll crank this guy up and see what happens. All right guys, we're going to fill him up. Alright guys, we're all full up now. Let's press play and find out what happens. That's just what we're after. A nice slow spray coming out equally over there. Nothing too vigorous. And that's lovely just leaking back into the aquarium like that because we don't want a great deal of turbulence in there. I was quite worried about the pump was going to uh, create too much and this was going to come out quite vigorously and, and create a stir like a wave action which I did not want at all but that is absolutely spot on that's what I was looking for and we got the adjustment on there as well which is midway so that is brilliant that's working really nicely that is guys I'm quite happy with that right then what we've used up here we've got the um, the tank siphon with the pipe and the fittings from the old um, sponge filter that I had lurking about. So we've created a really nice little trickle filter there, which is it's going to out filter anything out, any sponge filter that you put in there. And don't forget, we've got to put another sponge in there as well. So it's going to be a dual action filter. So we're going to have a finer sponge in there first. That's going to be our pre filter. I'll just take you out of the tripod and try and get you a bit closer to it. There yeah, guys, it's nicely filling up there. And emptying out nice and evenly all over that media. Obviously we haven't got that bit there getting, but it's going to get wet and it will create bacteria and things in there as we go along. I could put some filter floss in here, I suppose, and that would transmit that water along and down through that piece as well. But it's all working really well. If you come underneath, you can see it's just bleeding through that crack there. That's spot on. That's just what I was looking for, that. Nice and quiet. So there you go. We've used all that old stuff up from that tank and we've made uh, a really nice little shrimp filter. What I've got to do now, I've got to make a... Uh, I've got to make a sponge filter for that. Now I've got some fine green sponge around here somewhere. Here's some of the old green sponges where we've cut our old filter uh, pads from. So I'll take that out of the water now, I'll turn it off and we'll make a little sponge filter. Right guys, there we go, we're all done. Made a nice little sponge filter for that. If you ever want to make one of these, very easy to do. You can see what I've done there. If you just get your can from your your little holder you put it on there like that and then you just snip around it with the scissors and then you get a nice little uh, 
perfect fit. Oh, sorry about that. There you go. Nice little perfect fit all the way around. And now we can pop that back in. Just pump the air out of it. And there you go, we've got the can in the bottom. We put the little uh, sponge filter holder now back in the base. So now we've got our pre-filter going up now. Nice fresh water going up without any debris in it. And it's being deposited evenly now all over the uh, all over that bio home ultimate and the bio gravel, the bio home gravel as well. So that's going to create um, an amazing colony of bacteria in there. I've got a couple of old, I've got a sponge, what I'm going to do is pump an old sponge, I'm going to empty this out in a minute. I'm going to clear the uh, top of my bench off, where I want to put this, and then we're going to start cycling it. Okay, so I'll get back to you when I've cleaned everything up and done all the, uh, the water changes and everything and move things around. Okay guys? Right guys, before I, uh, before I go any further ahead, I thought I'd uh, just emptied it all out. But I got some of this stuff, which I used to uh, put in my coral tanks. I used to put my coral frags in there when I'm when I was breeding them and bringing on the little baby corals. And I had loads of this stuff. This egg crate is the uh, it's the good one actually. It's not the old white crappy stuff that shatters everywhere. This is that PVC. It's really nice stuff. I got, I thought what I'd do I'd cut these to fit in there. I stick them in behind. And they will lock in place like that. In fact, I think I got that the wrong way around. That's it. And now we lock that in place like that. And now we've got a different type of background. Now the plan is for doing that. We're going to get some moss and we're going to get some different plants. So we're going to plant them in amongst the back of that. So the moss will grow over it, we can put some java fern in there, different things, just let the roots go, anubias, all those kind of plants that we've got really in the mini pond next door, I can take cuttings from those and, um, and put them in there. And it will give loads of grazing area for the shrimps to have a go on as it matures. And, um, and it should look pretty good. So what we've got to do now, I've cleared out over the here. Mostly cleared out over there now on top of the bench. That's where it's going to go over there. Um, on top of my workshop uh, trolley there. It's got a good solid base to it. So that's where we're going to put it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clean up all this area here. Put the tank over there. We've got to find something to go on the base just to make sure it cushions it down a bit so we don't have a, a hard spot and we have a crack or something like that appear in the tank. So we're going to get something to put on the floor there, even some bubble wrap or something like that. We're not going to see uh, underneath when the gravel's in, so that's the plan. So we'll uh, catch up with you in a second when, uh, when I've done that, okay? Hey, you guys, all sorted out. We've got the uh, everything up and running now. It's trickling back into the tank just nicely. As you can see, just underneath there, it's not too turbulent. So it's not going to uh, lob the shrimps all over the place inside the tank with too much flow which is really good and like to say just a little recap on what we've done is we've used the uh, the vacuum there at the top the aquarium vacuum for the gravel as the spray bar we've used all the 90 degree bends and the, off the air filter we've used the pipe work from the gravel vac as well and we used the old pump that came with the tank which we picked up yesterday and we made a new little sponge filter, pre-filter for that as well. Now what I have got, which uh, which Richard sent me as well, was some of this matting, the wadding sheets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a nice piece of wadding sheet to go over the top of the, the bio home ultimate. And then um, 
we'll get even better filtration and we'll clear that, we'll polish that water right up with this stuff. This is brilliant for, uh, for doing that. So we'll cut a piece of that and then we'll fit it in. Right, there you go, guys, we've fitted that in now. We've put in some of the bio balls in amongst there as well, the uh, the ones that Richard gave us with the bio home. And uh, we put them in there, uh, starter cultures for the bacteria. So we put some of those in there. As you can see, I've drilled a load of holes, a series of holes in the top as well. Now that just lets the air go in, which obviously drains it quicker. Otherwise you find if you've got too many holes, it's too much pressure, you don't get that. With that, I get a, I get a lot better, as you can see, that, that water's pumping through there lovely. It's only a little pump. But if you create too much pressure with a little pump, you get that back pressure and it doesn't throw up as well. So we've done some holes on the top as well, as well as underneath now. So the air's going in and letting that water rush out as well. So we've got a nice little drip coming through underneath, which has created a nice little ripple in there. I've got one of my little aqua tiles, which I put up on the roof there, which I had from one of my old marine systems. They grow moss absolutely amazingly. And it's starting to look like something now, guys. It's starting to come on. Happy with it so far. Okay, guys, we're all finished for this uh, for this episode. We've got the uh, the gravel filter there working, the gravel hoover, which has been turned now into the spray bar. We've got the original pump, which we've cut down and put in a new filter pad at the bottom as a pre-filter. We've got the bio gravel in there, we've got the bio home ultimate in there. We've got some um, some matting in there as well, some uh, some floss, which is going to collect all the very fine particulate matter and stuff which is in there. And that's another pre-filter before it gets down onto the uh, onto the media underneath for the uh, for all those lovely little bacteria to start colonising. We've got a really nice little drip now underneath, just flowing really nicely back in. We've got no turbulence, so just a very slight bit of turbulence, which isn't going to upset anything. We've got a good water flow through there now, and um, it's looking quite nice so far. I've kept the water down because I don't like to keep shrimp tanks too high because they're little monkeys, they, they do like getting on the silicone when there's no lids on them and um, I've had them before and they've crept out the tank over the silicone so what we might do yet is like in the shrimp room might just put some little glass corners on there on each corner just to stop them doing that but there's loads of little homes for them in the back there now they can all go in amongst that, uh, that gridding, the gridding at the back, the PVC gridding And we're going to be sorting out loads of cuttings from the uh, from the shrimp room, some mosses, we've got loads of moss in there. And we'll plant it up and we'll push some in the back there, some job, and we're going to make like a wall effect, I think, in there, of um, of just nice mosses, all the vegetation and that growing up the back. So it'll give the little guys some nice uh, grazing area there when it, when it starts to fill out a bit. And like I said, we're going to make most of the things we can to, uh, to go into this tank, we've utilised what we what we had so far. We put of old glass and the stuff that we got with it. So um, there was a bit of changing around, I know, but these things happen when you do things off uh, off the bat like that. You just uh, you suddenly think of something different. Well, I do, and and go with what I think is going to work the best. And I think it's turned out okay so far. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. You're all stars. Love you loads. Look forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Take care. Just me and my guitar.